Okay, so we want to do something cool with the gravitational force and with the momentum principle. And I want to model the motion of an object near the Earth. Okay, so let's just set this whole thing up uh, on, pa <clears throat> on paper, and then we're going to move over to Python and do this in Python. So in this approximation, I'm going to assume two things that are different than normal. One is that I don't have a constant gravitational force because the gravitational force decreases as you get further away. So I'm going to have to model that with, with the universal gravitational force. Gravitational constant, the product of the two masses, divided by the distance between them squared, and this is a unit vector uh, which we need to deal with too. So in this case, r is the distance from the center of the Earth it's actually a vector to the location of the object. R hat is a unit vector equal to that vector divided by the magnitude of that vector. And we need to do that because if I, in order to square this vector down here, I need to find the magnitude. So it's no longer a vector. But the force is a vector. So I need to multiply by this unit vector R hat in order to make the whole thing a vector again. Now, a lot of times you can say, well, let's just not deal with that but we're gonna to have to deal with that because if this is moving this way, then the gravitational force is gonna change magnitude and direction. So it's a big deal, okay. Okay, so I know the mass of the Earth, it's really huge. I know the radius of the Earth. Uh, I know this gravitational constant, so I know all those things. So I just need to, to figure out how I'm gonna do this whole thing. Now, that since the mass of the Earth is ginormous, uh, the, the motion of the Earth is gonna be in, in me, not measurable compared to the motion of this. So I'm going to assume this Earth is fixed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do, and I'm, I'm going to do this legit way, right? If I have this as my origin, I don't have to put the origin at the Earth. Yes, that would make sense, but just bear with me. So let's call this the, the position of the center of the Earth, and let's call this the position of the object. And how would I find that vector r? Well, you see I have a vector subtraction problem here. This is just like displacement. So r is going to be r object minus r earth. And you see, if r earth was at the origin, then this would just be r would be the, the position of the object. But this is my first step that I'm going to do in my program. Calculate that uh, after I set up initial conditions. The next thing I'm going to do is to use that and calculate the force on the object. I'm not going to calculate the force in the Earth because I assume it doesn't move. So negative g, mass, mass of the Earth, r hat. Yes, I have to calculate that r hat, but I'll do that all one step. So. Next, what am I going to do? Now I'm going to use that force and the momentum principle to find the new momentum of this. So let's say it has the momentum vector. I'll just draw it this way. Uh, P1. So I can say F net is delta P over delta T. That's the momentum principle. So the momentum principle, if I solve, if I say this is equal to P2 minus P1 over delta T, then I can solve for P2 and I get P2 equals P1 plus F net delta T, where of course, I'll write it up here somewhere, P is MV, right? We don't want to forget that, just to be clear. That's a vector. So this is my third step. This says take the force on the object, which is just the gravitational force, multiply by some small time step, add that to the momentum and find the new momentum. This is the momentum update formula. After that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to update the position. So I know that uh, the average velocity, V average, is delta R over delta T. So I can do the exact same thing as I did over here and use the average velocity, or I'm actually going to use the final momentum. It doesn't really matter if my delta T is small, and to find the new position. So I'll say R2, this is actually the of the object, equals R object 1 plus P2 over M delta T. So P2 over M is the, is the velocity at the end, and I get that straight from here. And then I can say this, 
t2 equals t1 plus delta t, and then go back to step one. So this is a process of a numerical calculation. I take all these things and I calculate it in this order, and then I do that for a short time interval in which I can assume the force is constant, which is not, but I can assume it. And I can assume that the final momentum is the same as the average momentum, which is not. But if the time interval is small, it's pretty good. Okay, so all I need to do other than that is start with my initial position and my initial momentum of the mass. Let's start with uh, the very first momentum as zero. And let's start with this distance as 1.5 times the radius of the Earth. And I can put this in Python, and that's what I'm going to do, and we're going to model this. It's going to be awesome. Let's go over there. I'm pointing over to the computer. I'll see you there. Okay, so I got a little head start. I apologize. I was just excited. Um, so here is, uh, all I did was put in some constants. And the first thing I want to do, I don't want to just calculate where this object is going to be. I want to display it too. So this is what's great about uh, VPython. This is a glow script VPython, but I'm using Trinket, trinket.io, and I will include the code down below. Uh, and you can edit it and all that stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the Earth. Okay, so watch this. Earth equals... It's an object of type sphere, and it is at the position. Let's just put it at the origin because for now it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I need to give it a vector position for that. I need to give it a radius, uh, and that's just that's it. Okay. Oops, I've got one more too many parentheses. Run it, and there's my Earth. You can rotate it around. You can zoom in and out and all that stuff. But wait, I want to make it even better. In vPython, there's actually some textures that are built in. So I can say the texture type is equal to a group of textures uh, and dot earth. Now watch this. Uh, I don't know what. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? You can and it's shiny, I know, and there's too many light sources. You can make it look more realistic, but I don't really care at this point. Okay, so I have the Earth. Now I need to make my object. I'm called a spacecraft, so I'm going to call it a craft. Uh, craft is another type of object called a sphere, and it's going to be located on the x-axis, so it's over here, 1.5 times the radius away. So I'm going to say its position is vector uh, 1.5 times r e zero zero. Now for the radius, of course, it would be really small. Uh, I'm going to make. I'm going to say the radius is equal to 0.02 times the radius of the Earth. So that's actually too huge, okay? For but but if I make it the real size, you'll never see it. So I'm going to have to make it really big. And there it is. You see it right there. That's it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to say make trail equals true. So this, when the object moves, when my craft object moves, it's going to leave behind a little uh, trail. Uh, now I need to put a couple other things about the craft. I need to know its mass and its initial momentum. So I already said what that was going to be. Well, I didn't. Say, I think I did say the mass was going. To, so I'm going to say this craft.m. I can assign the property m to the the object craft, and I can say that's equal to 100. And you'll notice in all these things there are no units. Okay. There are units, but they're my responsibility, not the computer. If you want to put the units in here, you can. I can put a comment like that, meters, uh, kilograms, like that. Okay. So, but I'm not going to do that just for time. Uh, now, for the initial momentum, I'm going to also say craft.p equals craft.m times the vector 0, 0, 0. So this says starts with initial velocity 0 vector times its mass, and I get 0. Okay. Uh, I also need the time and the time step. Let's just say something like 0 0.01. That's what I normally do. Okay, that's good. Now let's do a loop. Remember, we're going to calculate the position of the object, the force on the object, the change momentum of the object, the new position of the object, and update time. So I'm going to do this for, let's say, while t is less than 1,000 seconds, which I know we'll change that. Don't worry about it. Uh, and I'm going to put this rate 100. So rate 100 says uh, do no more than 100 calculations per second. So since I have a time step of 1 100th of a second, this would be real time. Okay. 
So the first thing I need to do is to find the vector from the center of the Earth to the craft. So I can do that by saying r equals craft.pos minus earth.pos. So dot pos, if I, uh, let's see, let's, let's comment all, all this stuff just so you can see how this works. If I print craft.pos, it will print the vector position, which is this part right here. So I run this. And there you go. There's my vector. Okay. So that's that's how that works. So I can actually reference those things. Now I'm going to undo this. I'm going to undo that. Undo that. And so if you're not familiar with Python, when I make a while loop, I need a colon. And then everything that's tabbed indented is part of that loop. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to calculate the gravitational force. So here it is. F equals negative G times the mass of the Earth, which I have up there, times the mass of the spacecraft, graph.m. Now I need to multiply by the unit vector R. So there's a unit vector built into Python uh, functions. So if I say norm R, that is the unit vector for R. And they divide by the magnitude of R squared. Again, there's a magnitude built in. I can say mag R, and then I can square it. So uh, raised to the power is, is asterisk, asterisk in Python, Python. That's the next step. Now I need to ca update the momentum of the object. Craft.p equals craft.p plus f times dt. Now right here, uh, this equal sign, I like to point this out, is not an algebraic equal sign because otherwise the momentums would cancel. This is a make equal to sign. This says take the momentum, add f times delta t, and then make that the new momentum. So this is p1, p2, p3, it's all of the p's. Okay. Uh, now I need to update the position. Craft.pos equals craft, and you got spell it right, craft.pos plus craft.p times dt divided by the mass to get the average velocity. And then I update time. And that's it. Let's save it. And actually, I'm going to do this right here. So let's say print um, the final position. That's just, just for just for check. Okay. Oh, this is going to run for a thousand seconds, and I don't want to wait that long. So actually, I'm going to increase this to run it in, in fast speed. Oh, it's not even going. Okay, so I'm going to tell you I'm impatient. It didn't give me an error, did it? Okay. Uh, it's still running. But if I have a thousand seconds and one one hundredth of a thing, it's going to take a long time, even running at faster rate. Uh, let's just change this to point 0.1 and change this to zero and run it. There you go. Okay. There. That's pretty cool, right? You see the object here? It fell and it moved towards the center of the Earth. It took a long, long time, but it did. It did. It worked. Everything worked. Um, let's do this. Let's make this a one second time interval and make this a little bit lower. Let's make this 10 seconds because if you think about how far it's going to move in 10 seconds, it's not very far. Okay, but we have it working. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, but we want to make it a little bit cooler. So what if the object is not just released from rest, but instead moving in the y direction? So let's give it an initial y velocity of, let's say, um, 200. I am just totally guessing here. Okay, so it's a little bit different. It needs to go a little bit faster. Let's just say 2,000. Okay, you like that? Now I need, I could probably run this for a longer time. So let's say uh, that was 10 to the third, one times 10 to the fourth. And here we'll see something important. It goes right into the earth because the earth is not really there. Okay, it's just a, a thing. It's we're just calculating stuff, uh, and we're also getting an error um, because of the. I think the error here is that it gets too close to the center of the Earth, and the gravitational force gets too large. Okay, let's even make this. Uh, let's give this a negative one thousand. Let's try this. Okay, I want it to go even faster. I'm, going, I'm cranking this up to 4,000. 
Okay, that's good. Let's go a little bit. Um, let's go five thousand. I want to. I want to get like an orbit or something. Oh, a negative. I want this as positive. That's another problem. Okay, I got it now. It still didn't orbit, but it's getting better. Um, let's get this at two. You can play around with these numbers and get all sorts of cool orbits. There we go. No, it's still not going fast enough. But you see here, you see how simple this program is. There's nothing super complicated here, and we can make these really great motions of this object moving, in this case, through the Earth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase this even more. I wanna get an actual legit orbit. Okay, I'm happy now. There you go, check that out. All right, so there you go, that's a start. We're gonna do some more cool stuff with this, but I wanted to get you started on it and show you the power of numerical calculations. Okay, we'll do some more physics stuff later and I'll talk to you later.